Welcome to Muskegon Rising, a community service project of the Muskegon Rotary Club. Our purpose is to create lasting positive change. We've been doing that here since 1916. So, let's get started. Hello and welcome to Muskegon Rising. I'm your host, Aaron Mikey, and today I'm here with Rich Houdeman from Consumers Energy. Welcome, Rich. Thank you for having me today. So excited to have you and hear about this exciting project in Muskegon County. Yeah, it's very exciting to be here. So Consumers Energy has a goal of zero coal and 90% clean energy. How does this project in Muskegon County support that goal? Well, thanks for uh, asking that. So basically, this project, we need a lot of them, but this is going to be the first of its kind in the state of Michigan for us. It'll be the largest for a while at 250 megawatts. We are looking to onboard about 8,000 megawatts of solar. Imagine about 8,000 uh, big box stores. That's about what that would, you know, you know power. But um, so, yeah, so we have quite a ways to go uh, on our journey, but we are securing some lease rights and we're putting projects together. It takes some time. Uh, this project is taking, a, well, start to finish will take about uh, eight years. So it does take some time. There's a lot of different things I won't go into today, but that take, you know, we have to get it onto the grid and make sure the grid can accommodate us and all those types of things. But and, and back to your question on clean energy, we are, we are absolutely committed to a uh, greener and cleaner energy future. And we are going to be onboarding more of these renewable sources, but we, we are committed to, to be reliable too. And we do have gas uh, as our fossil fuel for base load power. We still have Ludington pump storage. So we have a, a portfolio of different generation assets, Aaron, that will absolutely make sure that the power is there when folks want it. It's truly amazing all the different ways consumer does power. And uh, I fish a little bit out of Ludington and all the fishermen <laughs> yeah. call it the project. Sure. But you talk about that as well, where how yeah. many years ago consumers was innovative in pumping water out of the right, lake at right. low time. Yeah. To release it when you need high demand power. Yeah, it, it's a fascinating project. Actually, it's really interesting. That project, along with the Muskegon County Resource Recovery Center, we used to be called the wastewater, they're both built about the same year. And uh, so they're both about 50 years old and they're both still going strong. But uh, really, what brought Ludington Pump Storage together was uh, nuclear power and other uh, fossil based assets were just spinning all the time generating power 24 seven. And to make that more efficient or more valuable, you know, you know, we don't use it as much power at night as we do during the day. So basically the premise of that is to pump the water up at night into a reservoir when all of us are sleeping or you know, a lot of factories may not be quite working uh, and then have it go back down to Lake Michigan during the day uh, and generating during on peak demand when we're all up and, and doing our thing. Amazing. And you mentioned the waste recovery or the wastewater treatment plan, as, as I still am going to call it, because it's ingrained. <laughs> sure. But that is truly an innovative project in Muskegon and how it recovers the waste, reuses it once it's been treated, and grows food. And now you're talking about another once-in-a-generation project from consumers in the solar power. Who were the players? Name drop a little bit. Who made this happen in Muskegon County? Well, so... I'll, I'll try to be brief, but the, for a lot of years, there was a big dream to have large lot industrial out there. Uh, you know, there's 11,000 acres, it's massive. And it was just very problematic because it was very expensive to get water and sewer utility services out that way. And after a while, the commissioners, you know, and the county staff just said, you know, what if we look at renewable? Uh, you know, and that was about 2016. And then in 2018, and not us, another developer came along uh, and pitched this concept for solar to the, um, the commissioners and, and the staff, and, and it was very uh, warmly received. Uh, that was proved in, in, in Moreland Township. And then we just came along, and we really wanted to, to, to be a part of that, so we acquired those rights. And uh, back in 2018... And then uh, we've been working on this for about six years to get to this point. That's very interesting. So that was about the time that the Cobb plant had come offline and it was being demolished, I think. And so it, is that what led to those conversations or was it prior to that in consumers 
really focusing on renewable energy and clean energy for our state? Um, you know, a lot of those forces were coming together at a similar time, Aaron. And I, I think coincidentally, you know, when we tripped the turbines in April of 2016 at Cobb, that was about around a similar time that the county made that transition. It's just coincidental, really, but it all worked together great. Uh, that was around the time we decided that, you know, solar became so cost competitive, uh, it really became a preferred way to try to get into that greener and cleaner future. Uh, wind was the primary motivator for us to, to, re to meet the state's renewable portfolio standard. And that's largely what that is comprised of. But now uh, we are doing a little bit of wind still, but it is mostly solar is in our future uh, from here on out to get to our renewable goals. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is it easier to generate power solar or wind? Um, wind uses a little less land, uh, but it is more, you have to be in the right wind regime. Like the thumb, if you go to the thumb area of our state, very saturated with wind. Uh, a lot of wind power over there. Uh, that's where the wind tends to be really great. Uh, we do have some up by Lightington and uh, over by Alma, up, you know, area in the middle of our state. But a lot of our, those areas have been uh, accounted for. And they can be very controversial. You know, they're about 33 stories tall to the hub. And, and not ever, you know, neighbors don't always get really excited about being near wind. Uh, solar is a little more unobtrusive, but you know, it have obviously any type of generation has its, you know, pushback, but uh, solar just seems to be the way uh, of the future for a variety of reasons. You mentioned, mentioned controversy, and I, I look at this through a lens of uh, if we're not making the world better, right? I, we know that pollution occurs, but if we can reduce that by making these investments, why wouldn't we do that for future generations? It just doesn't make sense to me. I don't know how you feel about that, but I love the investment. It's innovative. It's absolutely change. And we know how people react to change, but I just applaud consumers' investment in our future and being so diverse in their power generation. Well, thanks. And we, we know that we have to be accountable for our actions. Uh, we would agree with you on a lot of levels, Aaron, um, with that view. We want to leave it better than we found it. Uh, and we know that you know, we need to, you know, like we're going to still try to have farming be a little bit of a element of it. You know, we're we going to lease this property. It may not be solar forever. You know, we have a, about a 30-year lifespan of these projects. It could be returned to farming usage. You know, technology changes so much. But we did just plant about 1,000 acres worth of pollinators out there. So we are trying to keep you know, a sustainable type of, uh, you know, approach while we're, while we're doing this project and, and the life of the project. And I would imagine those pollination plants that you did support all the farming that's going on in all the surrounding properties. Well, it can. And I, and I can't probably speak to that directly, but in a, in a roundabout way, we will attract, you know, pollination and that may help in turn other nearby crops, certainly. So you mentioned 8,000 megawatts. I can't even fathom that. How many, and you said 11,000 acres, will most of that be the solar farm or just some of it? Great clarification question. So we are going to accommodate about, they're accommodating us for about 2,000 acres of the 11,000. So the solar project will be approximately 2,000 acres out of the 11,000. Um, it typically takes about, you know, seven to 10 acres per megawatt. So that's usually what we, when we budget for land, that's what we try to accomplish. You know, that's what we try to secure. And, and 8,000 megawatts, I think I read on one of the press releases, it, that's like 40,000 homes. Is that? Uh, that's a little power. Uh, well, this project alone, this, this project, the Muskegon project, we would power about 40,000 homes. Um, you know, 8,000 megawatts would power quite a few uh, I have to do the math, but uh, I, I don't have it right with me, but it could be a million homes, you know. Oh, my so, goodness. Yeah, but I, I'll, I don't want to speak to that right now because I got to get my calculator out. <laughs> it's a lot of energy. <laughs> it's a lot of energy. It's truly amazing. So this is a partnership with the county. Mm -hmm. how, how did that all come about? I mean, early conversations, you took over a yeah. lease. The commission, the county commission was really eager to develop this property. 
Absolutely. I mean, since they had that vision, uh, like I said, we came in and purchased the, the concept later. So they, they kind of happened before us. But I will just speak very warmly, uh, cordially about the relationship with Moreland Township. Uh, those folks were wonderful and hard to deal with to this day. Um, and then, you know, Ravana Public Schools has taken extraordinary interest uh, in, in the project, and they want to have their students come out and, you know, get FFA involved in, in their STEM uh, section. So, you know, the sky is going to be the limit. We just have to figure out how we're going to make all this work, but we really appreciate the community partners and collaboration. Uh, it's been a real unicorn project to have one property owner at one site and have all this positivity around it. It's not always the case, Aaron. I mean, it's, you know, there's it, some places it's very controversial. Uh, for whatever reason, this just worked out wonderfully. And, and uh, we, we just want to be a great uh, steward of the land and a great partner and seeing this through the right way. Well, leave it to Muskegon County to be innovative and collaborative sure. to make something like this happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, really interesting about bringing the kids out there in the FFA. I have a colleague whose daughter is very active in Ravana FFA. In fact, they're out at the, the fair this week. Okay. <laughs> and um, I can't imagine how this is going to benefit the growth of STEM. And further, you talk about those technological advances. Correct. You get those young minds thinking mm -hmm. and they're going to be more creative than us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and just, just to be clear, um, we will have about 200 construction jobs, just in case we don't cover it. I'll just throw it in there right now. It's going to be about $350 million. We do think it'll go online in around 2026. 20, uh, so it should start to really gain, visually start to come together fairly, you know, impactful fairly, fairly soon. I drove by, I think, last week, and it looks like there's already work going mm -hmm. on. It looks like a lot of underground stuff, sure. obviously lots of wires, but What's occurring on the site right now? Uh, you'll see some pilings being driven. Uh, panels will start to arrive. And we have something really interesting. It's called the Golden Row. And I've never heard of that concept before, but I guess we'd build out an entire row before everything else gets just to kind of prove out the technology because these panels are actually going to track the sun uh, throughout the day uh, for maximum, um, maximum efficiency. So. Uh, I think they'll just they'll, they'll they'll make sure all those things work well, and then they'll just kind of scale it from there. But uh, that'll be kind of fun to see. So the golden row, the golden with, row, yeah, and it's going to track a... the sun. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah, it's kind of exciting. So we'll we'll see how that all comes together. We're moving back to the sundial technology. I know, I know right? It's just it's an interesting time. So again, three hundred fifty million dollars, two hundred jobs. Uh, that's really amazing. What an investment! And yeah, so but when it's done. With the good thing, and you know, like we have 300 folks that work at our Campbell plant down in West Olive that will close in May of next year. We will find jobs for all those folks uh, if they want to stay with us. Um, but what's kind of, it's very expensive. That's why coal's very expensive. It's very labor intensive. Uh, renewables are pretty pretty low labor levels. You know, we we will probably be able to run this facility with six to ten folks. Uh, and you know, they'll, they'll be out there and, and those folks will need to be educated and we have local, um, resources to help educate them. You know, we love our friends at MCC and Baker and, and other places that, uh, where folks grab skills from, but, uh, yeah, it's just, you just don't need quite as many folks, uh, for those type of assets. That's cool. That's, that's awesome. And that you're mm -hmm. committed to retraining and, and mm -hmm. re-educating those staff sure. members that are going to lose their current position and, and keeping them and letting them grow with the company. Sure. Very, very, uh, very wonderful to hear that. So Rich, super exciting project. Anything else going on that we need to know about with consumers that you'd love to tout right now other than this huge project? Well, you know, we, we are very committed to Muskegon County. We've been here for about a hundred years serving. Uh, I've been looking into that a little bit. Uh, the Torrent family was really one of the first electric companies here. I just didn't, I was just learning about that. And anyway, we came in behind them. But um, so what, we, what we're doing right now is we're really trying to harden our system, our distribution system, our poles and wires and all those things. We're experimenting with undergrounding a little bit more. Michigan, uh, the storms of the last 10 years 
uh, have been some of the most violent in our history of Michigan. Uh, obviously, we had the storms back in 98, but you know, eight of our 10 worst catastrophic storms for outages occurred in the last 10 years. So we have to change our, the way we deliver power to, to, to keep the lights on. Uh, so we have some ambitious goals. We don't really want folks to be out for more than uh, 24 hours in any event, and we don't want any more than 100,000 people out at, at any given event statewide. And, you know, that's not the case today, but we're driving toward that goal. And we, and we, you know, so we're looking at, you know, maybe iron, more iron poles, uh, looking at, uh, you know, like I said, some strategic undergrounding and really uh, vulnerable circuits uh, where storm s- seems to have more of a higher frequency. But, you know, t- Claire had a tornado. You know, that never used to happen, you know, so we're, we're really just trying to adjust. And so, but we're, st- and so we're doing that, Aaron, but we're also still showing up strong in our communities. I mean, we've, I'm so proud of the investments we have made in this county, you know, in the Torrent House, we talked about th- that, you know, we wanted to, you know, contributed toward the rehabilitation of that. Uh, we gave a, a three $200,000 plus gifts to Dune Harbor Park. Uh, Rowan Park and Muskegon Heights. And I think, uh, I know we did like uh, Third Street, downtown Muskegon. I think there was one other one. So we're really just excited about, I'm just proud of the fact that Jackson or our headquarters is, is really cares for the communities we serve and really showing up in a strong way here locally. It is so important as a statewide organization that you understand that you are still local. Everything is local. That delivery of power goes right to the house. And your investment in our community, I see you everywhere I go, and you're in more places than I am. So it is visual beyond the financial resources that the human side of your business is there every day. And that's commendable. Well, well thanks for saying that. I think we both try really hard to represent our institutions well, and, and our institutions back us in a strong way. So that's good for both of us. And, and our Absolutely. And I, I love the ambitious goals because if you don't have an ambitious goal, you're never going to hit it. So set them high. And if you miss them, at least you knew where you were aiming and, and you've made it better. So, hey, Rich, anything else to add before we close? No. Um, if, if folks have uh, interest in seeing a coal plant at work, uh, we are having a September 21st community open house at Campbell. Uh, that's open to the public. So if you want to get into a coal plant one last time, uh, keep an eye out for that and you can register through Eventbrite. But um, other than that, it's just wonderful to be here today. I appreciate the time. Thank you so much for taking the time, Rich. You bet. Great to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Muskegon Rising. If you have any interest in future programming, please let us know that topic. On behalf of the Muskegon Rotary Club, thank you very much.